Hello everybody, I'm Michelle and I'm one of the two mythical unicorns here on this channel. Welcome to this video. Uh, it's great to have you here. And this time it's my turn to see how international my bookcase is. And this is really interesting because <laughs> this is not something that I tend to consider. I just pick up books that I want to read and I read them. Um, but I think most of us are trying to be more conscious of the media and uh, the books that we choose to consume nowadays after everything that is going on in the world I think it is important to be more conscious about these decisions so this was really fun and a good starting point to knowing like how international or not international your bookcase, bookcase really is I'll just get into it I'm gonna start from the Scandinavian countries and then sort of branch out into the European ones so I did have quite a few less um, than I thought Swedish authors on my shelves. I've been really bad with reading Swedish authors in the last, I want to say 12, 13 years. So that's probably something I should get better at. I'm going to choose a real classic, Astrid Lindgren. This is a speech she held in 1978, which is called Never Violence. And it's a beautiful little book uh, about, well, not being violent uh, <laughs> and taking care of each other and never ever hitting children, which is one of the, the big things in this. And it's really good. Next up, we're going to go to Denmark. Now, I didn't actually have any physical copies of uh, Danish books on my shelves, which is weird. Uh, I did, however, have the collective, the collected fairy tales of Hans Christian Andersen on my Kindle. So I'm gonna count this. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't count, but I'm counting it. <laughs> Next up is Norway. And I did have a couple of choices actually, but I'm choosing this one, which is Odin's Children by Siri Pettersen which is a fantasy trilogy which is incredible for any nordic country really it's not a big um genre around here so uh i've only i'm literally 50 pages into it it's really interesting though because um i'd say scandinavian or nordic uh fantasy is quite different from the, the fantasy that we are used to reading. It's very different. Very good though. Now we're going into the rest of Europe. So Spain. And I do have one. Well, I have a sequel to. And that's Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Safon. Uh, this is a Swedish translation. This is so good. And uh, there is an English translation. So if you are interested, uh, I really, I encourage you to pick this up. It's really good. Shadow of the Wind. Next up is Italy. I only had one here too. And that's One, None, and 100,000 by Luigi Pirandello. Quite possibly. I'm so sorry. I'm going to butcher every author's name in this video. This is a book a very good friend of mine sent to me for my birthday so I don't actually know much about it I do know that it's written early 1900s uh, so it's a bit of a I guess it's on I guess it's a classic it's supposed to be really really good I've read like a couple of pages of it and uh, it is very well written so far so when I'm ready for it I'll dive straight in Germany now, I didn't have all of the Grim Fairy Tales, but I did have one. The Robber Bridegroom by, obviously, the Brothers Grimm. This is from the Penguin Little Black Classics. I picked this up when I lived in Belfast about, ooh, seven years ago now. Jesus, it's been a while. And I remember really liking it. It's a, it's a good little story. Uh, the Grimm's are... I mean, they're a classic for a reason. They are very good. Belgium. But this is a really weird book. This is the People Spotter's Guide, volume one, 
A Field Guide to Humans by Tom Boremans and Sven van der Einde. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. This is another book that I was sent by a friend. <laughs> and um, this is essentially a really weird little book about finding very particular people uh, and sort of gaining points. The Affectionate Hooligan, for instance. 45 points. But there are certain people in this that's like 300 points because they're so rare. <laughs> this is a really just funny little weird book uh, by a Belgian author. So yay, England. Uh, I did have quite a few to choose from when it came to this, but uh, I'm going Neil Gaiman, Stardust. If you haven't read Neil Gaiman, Stardust might be a good place to start. It's odd, which he is, but this is like tame <laughs> for, for Neil Gaiman and it's not particularly scary, which a lot of his books tend to be. And I do, I love this. I love this book so much. Ireland. I had a couple of choices for this too, but I'm choosing a pretty obvious one. Sally Rooney, Normal People. Now this is the Swedish translation. And I read this this summer in like two days. Uh, it's really addictive. Um, the It's really weird. It's really confusing. It's really good. There's a reason people are talking about it. I'm currently reading Conversations with Friends, which is her first novel, I think, uh, which has the same kind of feeling to it. It's really weird, uh, but it's really well written and really addictive. Northern Ireland. I didn't think I was gonna find one for this. And then I remembered C.S. Lewis, the writer of Narnia, is from Belfast, Northern Ireland. So <laughs> this is my brother, the wizard. Uh, it might be magician. I don't know the translation uh, to English, but that's a direct translation from this Swedish copy that I have. C.S. Lewis, Narnia. Then Scotland. Another one that I didn't think I was gonna have one for. And then I found this. This I got from my mother in 2007, because that is also written in here. This is Captive in Under Earth. I don't, I tried to find the title online and I, I it didn't work out. This is written by Catherine MacPhail. I guess this is kind of a thriller kind of I mean it's for kids <laughs> so be aware I haven't read this since I got it which was 2007 so I would have been 13 uh, so just keep that in mind then we have Greece another one that I didn't think I was gonna have uh, a book for but then I remember I do have the Odyssey by Homer on my Kindle uh, this is obviously written in classic Greek from the beginning. Uh, it's been quite a while since I read The Odyssey. It's one of these books that I figured I probably should read at some point. It took me forever to get through, which is why I was very happy that it was on my Kindle. Partly, I'm very certain that book is pretty big. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I necessarily recommend reading The Odyssey in the Iliad, but I figured I should, so I did. And I have it here. France. This is another very popular book. The Little Prince by Anthony de Saint Supreme. I've no idea how to say that name at all. Uh, this is a really well known classic. I do, I love this book. <laughs> I'm one of the many who loves this book. It's very good. You should just know what you're getting into. It's an allegory. Yes, yeah, it is a thought-provoking allegory of the human condition. It was also from 1943. It's very short though, very good. I do recommend it. Then we have, well, Russia. I didn't know whether to put Russia in Europe or in Asia. Sorry. Uh, anyways, Master Margarita. Mikhail Bulgakov? 
which essentially is about the devil <laughs> running around in Moscow. Uh, another one that it's been quite a while, like a, a, a good couple of years since I read it. Um, it is very good though. Uh, this was another one of these that I was like, I should probably read that. <laughs> And um, one of my very best friends was like, that is a very good book and that is something you should really read. And I was like, right, I'll do that. Yeah, it's very good. It's the reason it's a classic. Switzerland. Another one that I really didn't think it was going to have anything, anything on, but it did. The Truth About the Harry Cubitt Affair by Joel Dicker. Uh, this was a crime novel that I picked up in our, uh, from our little bookshop in our little town that both me and Anna are from many years ago and then discovered that my mother had the Swedish transition. <laughs> so that's funny. This, yeah, as I said, it's a, it's a crime novel. It's very well written. It is very good. It's quite big. Uh, a lot happens. Uh, there is a TV show adaptation. I've not yet watched it. I haven't been in the mood, so it hasn't happened. But um, I've heard good reviews on it, so... I don't know. You wanna pick up the book? Do that. You wanna watch a TV show? Do that. Who knows? Last country that I found a book on in Europe is Poland. This is The Muscat Family by Isaac Bashevis Singer. Now, you can see on the, the condition of this book and how it looks, this is very old, and it is. Uh, my grandparents were trying to get rid of books that they just have laying around. And they were like, do you want to look through them? And I was like, sure. This is a book from my grandmother's father. Uh, this is the, uh, yeah, the Moscat family, which is a generational it spans generations. Uh, it starts in the early 1900s and stops right at the start of the Second World War. Uh, and it follows a family in Warsaw in Poland uh, during those years. And it's supposed to be very, very good. That was all of my European books. And I'm gonna be honest, I was really optimistic after checking out all of my European books because that was much more diverse than I thought it was gonna be. And so I got my, I got high hopes for the rest of the world and um, I really shouldn't have. The rest of this pile is real bad. Well, it's good books. It's just like, it's not, it's like, it's not as diverse. <laughs> Let's move on to Asia. I did think I was gonna have more books in this and then I realized most of my Asian literature is actually Japanese. And one of the bigger authors in that for me is Haruki Murakami. I picked IQ 1Q84 because I'm right now reading it and it's very good. I'm only on the first part uh, because I bought one of those uh, where it's divided into three books as it was originally published. So I wanted one of those. And this is a very beautiful copy. So I got that. Israel. Well, it's a non-fiction book that might give you a clue. Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. I started reading this somewhere last year, early last year and it's very good. I'm gonna be honest with you, I have not finished this. It's a lot of information to take in and I don't usually read a lot of non-fiction. It's very interesting though and it's very good. So I, I guess I'm still reading it. I haven't read it in a good while though. So let's see if I can uh, pick it up again and actually read through it all, but it's a lot. But Israel, and then on my Audible, <laughs> I have a South Korean book, obviously translated into English, which is called The Things You Can Only See When You Slow Down by Heyman Soonmi. I'm going to put just a front cover up here. It's very good. I like to read literature about like calming down your mind 
because I do have anxiety issues, so different types of, yeah, I guess methods are always good to read. And uh, this was a very, very good one. I do want to get a physical copy of this book, actually. And that's all I have for Asia. How sad is that? Literally three books. That's so sad. And one of them is not even a physical copy. That's bad. Moving on to North America. Uh, obviously I had quite a few American authors on my shelves as I guess most of us do, but I'm picking one of my favorites, V.E. Schwab, Victoria Schwab. This is Vicious, uh, which is the first book I ever read by her, which is why I picked this one in particular. This is also a beautiful edition. And if you haven't read V.E. Schwab yet, what are you doing with your life? Canada. I didn't have many options for this, sadly, weirdly, because I haven't read A Handmaid's Tale. Sorry. There's a lot of more Canadian authors than that, by the way, but it was one of the ones where I was like, I should have a Margaret Atwood on my bookcase, and I didn't. I did, however, have Ruby Kaur. Kaur? Kaur? Sorry. I love her poetry. I think it's great, which is why I have the physical copies. I obviously follow her on social media and uh, yeah, these collections are very good. And that's North America. I didn't have any Mexican authors. Moving on to South America. <laughs> and the only one that I could find was from Brazil, Paulo Coelho, The Alchemist. Another kind of I guess a modern classic at this point. It's one of these books that can seem pretty pretentious. I decided to pick it up. It is very good. It's very interesting. <laughs> it takes a while to get into it. If you're not used to reading stuff like this, this might not be the best start. I don't actually know. But I did really enjoy this story. And that's all my South American authors. Oh, that's really sad. <laughs> Moving on to Africa. Another really sad, sad collection of books. Very good books, but way too few. <laughs> South Africa. I'm gonna talk about two books here because I have so few to talk about. <laughs> One is nonfiction, and that's Trevor Noah, Born a Crime. Trevor Noah is a comedian, a genius comedian from South Africa, who sort of grew up, I guess at the end, or yeah, sort of the end of apartheid, in South Africa. Uh, so his childhood is really interesting. His father is white, I think he was Swiss. So he was not allowed to exist in this time. I would just read it, it's very good. The relationship that him and his mother have is hilarious and amazing. And the experiences that he has, uh, especially in his childhood is sad, but very good. This is very good to recommend a fiction book, <laughs> Intentional Dissonance by Ian S. Thomas. Uh, this is a sci-fi book that takes place 10 years after the world has ended. And we follow this man who's trying to, you know, live his life in a world that is not really functioning. And this is so good. It's so good. And then the last book that I can talk about in Africa, in Africa, is Americana by uh, Shimanda no, Noguchi Adichie. Noguchi Adichie. I'm so sorry. This is a very good book. It takes a while to get through. This is literary fiction, and it's about a couple that meet in Nigeria. One of them then moves to the States to study, and then he's supposed to follow her there, but for some reason, he never does. Uh, so you follow both their lives in Nigeria as well as in the States. And this is a very good book if you wanna try and understand an African perspective in uh, America, or at least that's part of it. It's about a lot more than that. But this is a very good book. Uh, 
and the author herself is from Nigeria, so she knows what she's talking about. Yes, read it. <laughs> the last category is Australia and New Zealand. And so sadly, I had no New Zealand authors. Anyways, I guess I'll try and remedy, remedy that. I did have a couple of Australian authors though. And this is an obvious choice. <laughs> Marcus Zusak, I am the messenger. This book might not be the most obvious one. Uh, the most obvious one is probably the book thief, which is incredible. However, I am the messenger look at my copy of this book like it's destroyed because i've reread it so many times uh, i've owned this book many years at this point uh, i don't know how many times i've read it it's very good it's about ed who's a <laughs> an illegal cab driver <laughs> who stops a robbery and then he starts getting cards in the mail from an unknown anonymous human and uh, he gets tasks to do and it's very good and you should read it if you haven't. So that correlates to 25 countries which is okay I guess I don't know. What I have realized is that I really want to expand my South American authors, my African authors and my Asian authors which I should probably be aware of since uh, I do live in Europe, so a lot of the translated stuff that we do get here is probably European authors, so that's pretty obvious. Asian literature has gotten bigger uh, with uh, Maruki Hurikami, for instance, uh, who's gotten really big, but I guess it's all about educa educating yourself and trying to be better. So I think I'm gonna have to look into more authors and books that I could buy and have on my shelf. I am a mood reader, but I'm also the kind of person that if it's on my shelf, it's much more possible that I'll read it than if I don't have it on my shelf, which is pretty obvious. But that means I have to buy it first. Uh, so if you do have any recommendations at all about African, Asian, or South American, authors. I would love your recommendations, uh, as well as from New Zealand. I think I have Europe pretty much down. Well, no, I have like a, a book from a couple of countries. Uh, <laughs> so if you have any recommendations at all from either the, the countries that I have mentioned or countries that I haven't mentioned, do leave them down below because I think I need to extend um, and be better with this. So, yes. That was it for today. If you liked this video, please like it. Share if you would like to. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already to see our next videos. And uh, until next time, bye.